How did this tiny startup create what seems to be one of the most excited and almost Tesla-like fan bases, and they did it all with one less wheel way before the first deliveries that won't even start until the next year? I have asked that question of myself, you, my YouTube audience, and the founder and CEO of Aptera, Steve Fambro. To my surprise, none of the answers matched, which I guess is a good thing, so let's figure out how did they do it and what we can expect moving forward. Welcome to E4 Electric, where I reveal the truth behind the electric car headlines. So don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. So I have to confess, I wasn't going to make this video this week or this month or probably for the rest of the year. But when I posted a poll on my YouTube feed asking you guys uh, which brand you're still the most excited about, you know, is it still Tesla or is it Rivian or Lucid now? But when you started replying, a lot of you said that you're not as excited about any of those as much as you're excited about Aptera. So I was like, uh, okay, so a three-wheeled EV with solar panels on top? Uh, and listen, I have always liked Aptera. I mean, it will have the longest EV range of all time. It's got the best solar tech in any car. You may not even have to ever charge it. And most importantly, it does look cool. It, it kind of looks like a spaceship had a baby with a bicycle. Adorable. Now, I knew it was a thing, but I never thought it was a big deal. So, in my next poll, I asked about what it is that you actually liked about it. And that's where the bigger picture started to shape up. And I have never heard of this type of answers before. What a lot of you said you liked about this EV is the efficiency, innovation, and the right to repair. Now, this tells me that the core fan base of Aptera are nerds and i mean it in a good way i mean i'm wearing my frameless glasses and uh, my uh, calculator watch so i am a proud member but let's be honest here no average consumer cares about any of those things people don't care if uh, let's say their phone battery is efficient uh, they do care about the real things the important things, like how long it lasts while they ignore their friends and family watching TikTok. And that's how you build a cult-like following, pretty much like Tesla did back in the day, and I certainly was a member of that tribe. When I and a few other people became one of the first owners of the Model S in 2012, we cared about it being electric and environmentally friendly and new. But now, now people don't really care about any of those things when they buy a Tesla. They only care if their neighbor and Kanye West have one. And by the way, uh, before I get to my conversation with Aptera's CEO, did you know that Aptera actually has a very interesting and long history? Yeah, Aptera has actually been around since 2006 when their first three-wheeled car design was announced. Two years later, they have secured about $24 million in funding and planned to start selling the car by the end of that year. But by 2009, things have gone downhill. Aptera has failed to secure important government loans, had some technical issues, and employees started to leave. And by 2011, Aptera Terra was going out of business. A couple of years later, its assets were purchased by a Chinese company that tried bringing it back to life, but also failed. And it wasn't until 2019 when the founders have once again resurrected their company and with a successful crowdfunding campaign, got the company back on its feet. In 2020, Sandy Monroe became an investor and a consultant. And now, earlier this month, Aptera revealed that they had over 35,000 reservations for their EV that will have up to 1,000 miles of range, including up to 40 daily miles from just the solar panels. All right, so now we know what you guys think the Aptera's mojo is, and we brushed up on some history, but what does the founder and co-CEO of Aptera, Steve Fambro, thinks it is? And yes, he is one of the two CEOs. 
Now, why does Aptera need two CEOs? Well, my guess is that just in case if one of them goes crazy and buys himself a social media platform, the other sane one can take over. But here's what Steve told me why he thinks Aptera became so popular when I talked to him earlier this week. When it when it comes to electric vehicles, the the limiting constraint is range, right? People are always worried about range. And if you look at the sales data, the sales data, the volume seems to correlate to range. Longer range vehicles, higher sales volumes. And so if you accept that, then you, you say you only have two ways of giving that high range. One is with an extraordinary amount of batteries, but the other one is with extraordinary efficiency. And so Aptera took the efficiency approach where we use fewer batteries, but higher efficiency. So I'm going to disagree with Steve a little here on the whole volume correlation to range thing, because the EVs with the longest range, like the Lucid Air, the Tesla Model S, the Mercedes EQS, they're all like the most expensive EVs right now on the market. And because of that, very few of them were actually sold. But to Steve's point here, it does look uh, like the efficiency, something that a lot of you have mentioned in your answers, is Aptera's biggest pride and joy. But then there is the price. Uh, the things that we can dominate are on low price and high range. And we believe looking at the sales data with our formula that that will help us drive the volumes long term. So you mentioned the low price. Um, actually, I, and it looks like you have no problem getting reservations. I don't know what the count is, but last time I checked it, you guys have more than plenty for a while. Um, you know, the price is actually not, I mean, you can get a couple of four-wheeled EVs like the Leaf and the Bolt for, for, for kind of the same price. Um, what do you think makes people say, no, I'm going to get the Aptera even though I might pay a little bit more? A couple of things. <clears throat> I think dollar for dollar, you're still going to go much further in the Aptera. So you look at a $29,000 Aptera, the 400-mile, you know, 40-kilowatt-hour pack, um, and try and match that with a leaf or a bolt or something, you're going to go about half the range, number one. And of course, you have four doors and four seats. And for a lot of people, that's very important. I, I drive a bolt myself. Um, I'll be driving an Aptera soon. But, um, <clears throat> I think the, the big disruptor for us is, and I don't know if you can see it on the vehicle behind me, the cells, is a solar mobility. You know, we have, we have free energy from the sun. We already have nuclear power fusion, right? It's the sun. And, you know, no saboteur can, can destroy it. No tyrant can turn it off. It's there for everybody. It's there every day. So I'm going to disagree with Steve one more time here uh, when he said that no tyrant can turn it off and it's available and it's there every day. Uh, there is a tyrant that can turn it off and it is the clouds. And then you don't get it every day. Which brings me to the concept of never having to charge your electric car. Now, right now, Aptera claims that you will get up to 40 miles of range every day, which is more than enough for most people on most days to never have to plug it in. Granted that it needs to be parked outside during the day and it can't be in, say, Seattle, it has to be sunny for it to work. But honestly, I don't really know why it is such a big deal to plug your car in. I mean, it takes me all, what, three seconds to do it? Four if I trip over the charging cable? And the infrastructure is getting better. I think what the Aptera's fan base are the most excited about here is not the time saved, it's just the concept, which is really cool. I mean, never refueling your car again is pretty freaking awesome. And just in case if you're wondering, the solar panels, which by the way, Aptera has just started production of in partnership with Maxion, are swappable. So as the technology improves, you can replace your current tiles with more efficient ones and the daily solar range of the car will increase. Now that is something. Another advantage that Aptera has, and a lot of you have mentioned this as a big perk, is that Sandy Monroe is not only an investor, but a consultant to the brand. This is what Steve told me about Sandy's involvement. 
They've helped us figure out how to build a vehicle. They've helped us lay out the factory. They've helped us select or design equipment to build it. Uh, the equipment that goes on the robotics, it moves the vehicle around. Uh, their engineers have taken our battery design and then gone through it with the benefit of all the teardowns they've done. And they said, here's things you could do to make it even you know less expensive, more robust, et cetera. So there's probably not one single element of the vehicle that uh, Sandy's team has not touched. Sandy was a big part of the Aptera Gamma prototype unveiling a few weeks ago here in California. Now, next, me and Steve talked about something that everyone is very patiently waiting on. Now, the biggest uh, sort of uh, uh, interest that people have been sort of having and guessing about is not even part of the car, technically. It is the plug that's going to go in, right? Because in, even in the early days, you guys have uh, uh, showed us the Tesla plug going in. And I think Aptera right. has kind of lobbied that <clears throat> that should be a standard, which I don't disagree with, but that, I, that, that, that ship has sailed, unfortunately. Um, what's, what is it going to be? Is it, uh, is it going to be the uh, Tesla uh, a plug? Or do you think you will move into what's becoming the standard even for Tesla? Uh, later this year, which is C uh, CCS? I, I don't know yet. We're designing for the Tesla plug. We also have package protected for the other plugs. So we can use either. Now, later in the interview, Steve did tell me that the choice is essentially waiting on the results of their negotiations with Tesla rather than any technical issues. And with Aptera targeting summer of the next year for the production, the decision time is approaching fast. And of course, I couldn't resist to ask Steve one last but obvious question. I know all, all eyes are on you know, the first vehicle, but, you know, sooner or later, and you probably have already been asked this before, and I'm sure you've discussed it internally, but at some point people will be like, well, we love the three-wheeled uh, product that you have. Why not go ahead and design a, design a four-wheeled electric vehicle? Is this idea on the table at all right now? Sure. I mean, this is, you know, for us, the, the Aptera is, Aptera is the tip of the spear. So there's more behind it. And there's there's different missions that require different kinds of vehicles that still need our solar and our efficiency to be viable. So uh, Jason Hill leads a design team and that design team you know, is still doing work on this vehicle, but they've already, there, there's work ideation at least that's gone on to what the other vehicles might look like, how much of this platform they could use or would have to be different um, you know, is that vehicle a four passenger or seven passenger vehicle, those kinds of things. Those are, those are certainly in the works and they would leverage lots of the technology that's on this vehicle behind me. Now that surprised me because none other than Sandy Monroe himself gave me this warning about Aptera entering the full four wheeled EV market when I talked to him about it last year. Now, let me ask you kind of a out there question because you know, I'm a dreamer. Like let's say that, you know, they do well Aptera and they start making these and it's popular and they're profitable and all that yeah. stuff. But one day they said, you know what, we, we want to go ahead and, and add that fourth wheel and start making, you know, the you know full electric cars. How hard or easy would it be for them to actually convert themselves or come up with a four wheeled full regular electric car? Or is, is it that hard that they probably just going to have to stay in that niche? It depends on how much money they want to lose. Because when you're in the three wheel vehicle business, <clears throat> and you start hitting stride at around 100,000 vehicles a year, um, you're going to be doing really remarkably well as far as profitability. As soon as you move into the four wheels and you start looking at all of the regulations that you've got to jump into, it starts getting uh, quite a bit more expensive and time consuming. And, um, and your, your engineering effort is going to have to jump uh, orders of magnitude. So... Uh, it's a, it's a it's an expensive proposition to go into what uh, the big boys call the real cars yeah. as opposed to uh, as opposed to motorcycles so okay i will let them figure that out they certainly have plenty of time but as for me 
I have learned that Aptera is not only going to be a likely success, it will probably become that very much because of its dedicated and loyal fan base, which they have grown over a decade through all of the failures and triumphs. Let me know in the comments section down below if you are yourself a fan or a reservation holder or an investor and what made you fall in love with this three-wheeled alien bicycle. And if you haven't yet seen my video about why I fell out of love with my Volkswagen ID4, I put a link to it right there or you can click on it in the description of this video. All right, looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time and remember to stay charged. Take it